At Itawamba Community College, your education is our top priority. With a 20 to 1 student to teacher ratio, you will get the help that you need from your instructors. With three locations in Fulton, Tupelo, and Belden, ICC offers classes that will prepare you to enter almost any job field of your choice. Learn more about Wallet Hub's number one community college in Mississippi and the 25th best in the country by visiting iccms.edu or apply online at apply.iccms.edu. Itawama Community College, the best start here. Ever since you got that license, you haven't stopped moving forward. Now that you're older and on the move, you need a safer place to keep your money. We get it. A student checking account frees you up with things like mobile check deposit to take care of that check from grandma without having to stop at a bank. Pay with your phone when you're out with friends and stop worrying about ATM fees. We'll pay you back for those. Worry about your future, not your money and know that we'll stick with you, wherever you go. Renaissance Bank, understanding you. Member FDIC. Celebrate ICC fans, the Indians pick up the 22-21 victory over the number two team in the country in Senatobia, ICC with the win. A college boy. Good morning and welcome to another edition of the ICC Hour. I'm Adam Gore. You just heard my final call there. What a fun night it was Thursday night as the ICC football team upset the number two team in the country, 22-21 in Senatobia with that big win there over Northwest. Unfortunately, though, for the Indians, the tiebreaker, while it didn't make a lot of sense, didn't play out in their favor, and their season also ended on that. But what a great way to end the season on such a high note there, defeating the number two team in the country in Northwest. Uh, they do finish in a tie for the North Division crown, but after all the tiebreakers broke down, uh, Northwest and I believe it's, yeah, East Mississippi end up making the playoffs there. Uh, once again, this is the ICC Hour here on Super Talk Mississippi, presented by Renaissance Bank. Renaissance Bank, understanding you, RenaissanceBank.com. Speaking of Renaissance Bank, let's take you back to last Thursday's Renaissance Bank postgame report where we sat down and talked with Coach Sean Cannon about the Indians' win over the Rangers. Thank you. ICC wins 22-21. We're stepping inside Coach's Corner here with Coach Sean Cannon. Coach, my, oh, my. My, oh, my, what a ball game tonight. And it's a classic here in the MACJC. Uh, just real quick, your thoughts on the game tonight? You know, the biggest thing I told them before the game, and well, I told them last night in our team meeting. I said, guys, I said, the, the greatest things in your life when you get old, I said, is marrying your, marrying your wife. I said, watching your kids be born. Uh, I said, and getting your first real paycheck. Uh, and, and I said, and the fourth thing is proving people wrong, you know? And I told a story about uh, in, in 1993 that, uh, I wasn't good enough to play to, you know, play up here. And uh, I remember coming off the field, we played these guys, and uh, the head coach that time, he said, man, I should have signed you. you know, and I, and I proved people wrong. And I said, nobody gives us a chance but us. And then tonight, before we came out, the uh, thing I told him, I said, guys, the team is going to have the most hearts going to win this game. And that's what we did. We fought, you know, and then we had some breaks go with us. You know, the snap over the head was huge. And I'm so glad he punted that ball out on the two. Because uh, I knew that was going to be a spot foul, and we were going to get the ball right there, man. But our kids, how about Woods making a big play there? And then, man, our defense just stepped up play after play in that fourth quarter. And, man, I'm just so proud of the kids and how they've, they've come back from nowhere to win four in a row in October, you know, and, and, and finish it up the regular season like this. It's unbelievable. So proud of the kids. Coach, you, you hit on how you really fought all night long. There was two key spots I felt like in the game. One – about midway through the second quarter where they had the big kickoff return, they scored a touchdown. We got the football back, we answered right back. And then they got it back and they scored again right then before the halftime break. But you came out in the second half, it was a totally different ball game again. That, as well as then down the stretch of the fourth quarter, we had those two huge stops when they had an opportunity to take the lead and win the football game at the end. Yeah, which well, two huge spots. You know, to me, the drive right after half, uh, we held them down. They got it down about, I think, about the 20 or so, and they backed themselves up, and we was able to get off the field and make them punt. And, and uh, you know, then you get word here at the end. They're going to try to get field goal range. I knew that's trying to do, but just trusted our kids to go out there and make a play. And, man, boy, I just tell you what, I, I thought they all laid it on the line. And give Northwest credit, great football team. Uh, but what a way to go into um, to finish up our, 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 our last regular season game. And, and so proud of these sophomores coming back and what happened last year, you know, playing in the rain and set ourselves up in the same situation last year, but, you know, didn't, didn't take care of business. I was so proud of our kids tonight, Hiram and Clark, and 
Keyshawn and Nick Smith and all those guys that, that man just you know they kept fighting all year, man. What what, what a great way to cap our you know our regular season off. Well, go ahead, you start out the year 0 and three. Not not happy with where you're at. You go down to East Mississippi, don't play very well, and it's like from that point on. This team took on a brand new identity and to the point where tonight, where we, we talked about it at the end of the football game, Jim and I did. That football team on the field right there tonight, Coach, was not the same team that was on the field against Pearl River Week 1. No, I told the kids that this week. I said, guys, I said, look, look at our defense. I said, first three games of the year, we averaged 39 points a game giving up. I said, you know what we've given up in the last five, not including this game? I said, 12. I said, it's now, you can chalk it up to, to whatever. I said, but that's that's about 40 freshmen understanding how to play college football and coaches keeping after them. And then you can see you can see the kids just kept getting better and better and better. And as a coach, that's what you always want. You want your kids to just keep getting better. And that's what we did, you know. I mean, we got a lot of character guys on this team. Uh, and I'm hard on them. I know I am. But, but I, I want them to this is the reason I'm hard on them because this game right here, so they can ex experience what it feels like to battle and win a, and, and win a football game. Uh, but you're right. I told the kids, I said, look, I, I would be so proud now to take this football team back three, you know, our first three weeks, and let's go see how we play again. And I said, let's 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 be honest. We were we were terrible, you know. But our kids have just found a way, and, and they bought in to you know to to us as coaches, and I, and I think they understood. What it really means to be a team, you know. I, I don't think we, we had a lot of camaraderie early in the year, but our kids have, you know, have bought in and and, and, and come close. Man, just so proud of them. Come on, Williams had two big interceptions tonight. Uh -huh. uh, just talk about those two. Oh two, man, two I, he come to the side. I said, "Look, dude, you know they're picking on you." I said, "You know they're picking." I know, coach. And I said, "You're gonna have to make a play. You're gonna have to make a dang play." And what? And then getting the one pick and then picking it off in the end zone. Oh man, that, that's when they had to. We thought it was gonna be able to run the clock out, but I knew they had three timeouts. So I told the defense, I said, "Look." They're going to be able to stop. We're going to have to punch the ball back. We're going to stop again. So we, we got our our, our, our uh, six DB package in and and, uh, and put our, our linebackers at defensive end, got some good pass rush, and, and just uh, what, what way to finish the game. You know, one thing that stuck out to me all night long in those big situations, was that, that was a quarterback across the way. He, he's played at the Division One yep. level. He's played at a high level at the Division One level. Right. That is. Um, when you got into a big situation, those third and longs, those possession plays, you were able to pin the ears back and get to him. And over the course of the night, I think it rattled him a little bit. You could see that there towards the end, definitely. You know, going back and watching, you know, I, I broke down their last five games and then went back and just kind of eyeballed the first three. They were throw, 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 throw early in the year. And then, uh, you know, 17 for them, uh, we found out this week was hurt, one of their good running backs. And then, you know, we knew we knew five, five had scored, I think, nine touchdowns in the last three games, something like that I read. And, and so we knew coming in, we're going to have to tackle. You know, we got we got to stop the run game, and and and, and I think offensively they started panicking a little bit, and got in four receiver sets, and that's really not what what Northwest wants to do. So it kind of played into our hands. I rush three, drop eight. There's nowhere to go. Quarterback scrambling, we're able to get him down. You know, and he made some plays. I mean, they they, they got some talented players over there. Three's a good player, and six, and you know. But I think our, our our kids just found a way to, like you said, get out, get after the quarterback. And I just don't think he was like this. This is not supposed to happen. Uh, you know, but but we did, and man, I'm just so proud of the kids and 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 the way they did that. Well, Coach, uh, before we let you go, what about this crowd? This ICC All American Band standing room. If you're lucky here across the way, oh. every time you turned around, needed that crowd to step into the ball game to help will the guys to victory. They were there on the man. Line. I told I told every band director, and I was coming up the stairs here. I told my boy, I said, yeah, I said, it meant so much to our kids for y'all to be there. Doctor Allen said that a couple weeks ago. He said, I, he said, you would you like to take a pet band in Northwest? I said. Doc, any time our kids can hear our fight song and our chop, I said, does nothing to help them. And, man, I thought that was a – they were definitely the 12th man tonight, you know. And uh, But but great crowd. Turned around here at the end of the game, looked up, and I was man, I pack. Yeah. I never really looked at them that much during the game. Looked up, and I said, man, we had a large crowd here. A lot of the kids from this way's family was here and and, uh, and all those things. So just 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 overall, such such a good good night for the Indians. Coach, we had a lot of people texting throughout the end of the ball game, just trying to help you guys find a way to win. Coach Andy Kirk, Bronson Prohaska. Uh, Grant Pate, uh, just to name a few, uh, just give you a moment right now uh, to kind of just thank that ICC family that uh, has stuck with you through it. Like you said, it wasn't pretty to start with, yeah. but man, oh man, what a, what a what a night tonight. Yeah, you know, they always say it's not really how you start, it's how you finish. And uh, that's so true in the sports world. And, you know, you, you can be in the bottom of the bottom of the barrel and you just find your way to, you know, this reminds me so much of my first year here. We start out one and three and 
and finished five and four, one four of our last five, and, and, and you know the kids just you know just bought him, you know, and, and I think forty freshmen grew up tonight, you know, grew up as the season goes on, and, and it showed tonight, you know, has had some kids make some good plays for us, but you know, but uh, but you know, can't thank everybody enough and and, and all that, and man, to, to wake up tomorrow is going to be a great day. Absolutely, you see your players right there celebrating on the Little Caesars instant oh, yeah. replay. ICC wins it 22-21 of the number two team in the country in their own backyard. We're going to take another timeout. Well, as you can tell, it was a very, very proud and very excited Coach Sean Cannon uh, after last Thursday's win over Northwest. The number two team in the country, uh, the Indians picked up a 22-21 win there to wrap up their season. Now, we're going to stay on the theme of athletics this week, and when we come back with the ICC Hour being presented by Renaissance Bank, we're going to take a look at the upcoming basketball season with interviews with uh, Coach Robin Porter, first-year lady Indians head coach, and also Grant Pate. We'll talk about the Indians' uh, schedule and games as well. And that's that and more when the ICC Hour continues right here on Super Talk Mississippi. You live life on your own terms. You won't be told what you can't do. And we're here to back you. From the boardroom to the big stage, Renaissance Bank supports women striving for success. Because greatness isn't held to anyone's expectations, except yours. So if anyone says you can't, prove them wrong. Rise with Renaissance, supporting women in the communities they influence every day. My burger goes best with mustard. Ketchup and mustard. Grass-fed beef. No, corn-fed. On the grill. Now, nah, flat top. Iceberg lettuce. Nah, arugula. Jalapeno. No way. Avocado, dude. Medium rare. Gotta be all done. Rio. Sesame seeds. American cheese. Cheddar. Can I have a turkey burger? What? Turkeys are for Thanksgiving, man. I like my burger with the Coke. I'll agree to that. Strictly with the Coke. Only with the Coke. Coke and a burger. Come on. All right. That's where you get the flavor. Everyone has a unique story to tell. Maybe your story has you performing your new song in front of a crowd, getting to play your favorite sport, or enjoying a horseback ride in the country. At Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi, our group of skilled surgeons understand your need to continue your story. That is why we are the preferred choice for orthopedic care. Thank you for choosing us. Our story is you. Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi. Get a Little Caesars large, extra most bestest stuffed crust pizza topped with pepperoni and cheese. And stuffed with over three feet of cheese. In the crust. That's right. We stuffed cheese. Into the crust of the pizza with extra cheese. And the most pepperoni. All at the nation's best price of just nine bucks. Try our convenient app and pizza portal pickup. Pizza, pizza. At Itawamba Community College, your education is our top priority. With a 20 to 1 student to teacher ratio, you will get the help that you need from your instructors. With three locations in Fulton, Tupelo, and Belden, ICC offers classes that will prepare you to enter almost any job field of your choice. Learn more about Wallet Hub's number one community college in Mississippi and the 25th best in the country by visiting iccms.edu or apply online at apply.iccms.edu. Itawamba Community College, the best start here. And welcome back to the ICC Hour being presented by Renaissance Bank. Renaissance Bank, the best bank in the South. Visit renaissancebank.com. Well, as we said, uh, we're going to be athletic heavy today as we just wrapped up the football season uh, in the process of wrapping up soccer season. Of course, we'll talk about that a little bit later on in the show as well um, with this game be, or shoot, excuse me, not this game, but this uh, broadcast being pre-recorded. We'll kind of break down the women's soccer playoff situation uh, here in a moment. But before we do that, uh, we're going to take and look back at a couple of interviews Lee Adams had with Coach Robin Porter and Coach Grant Pate to talk about the upcoming women's and men's basketball seasons here at ICC. Of course, they tip off the season on November the 4th. Uh, you can watch that game against Volunteer State on Let's Go ICC TV.com, the red channel. And we do want to encourage you to visit Let's Go ICC.com to see that full schedule, rosters, and then, of course, keep up with the teams throughout the season as well. Let's go to those interviews now here, part of this Little Caesars ICC Spotlight. 
Coach, exciting time, basketball season right around the corner. First time as a head coach for you. So uh, talk a little bit about some of the nerves you may have as a first year head coach and some of the teams you're gonna face in the schedule this year. Well, the transition has been great. We have a great group of players around me, so it has made it a little easier. But at the same time, I have that nervous anxiety, excited at the same, want to see how the girls produce on the court. Uh, just, ready, just ready for November the 4th to get here. Okay, well, talk about that. November 4th, got Volunteer State coming in. Talk about, not necessarily just Volunteer State, but some of the tough out-of-state opponents we have before we get into the conference play. We have uh, Montlow, Gaston, and of course, uh, top rate team already came out, Shelton State. They always give us a run, but all of them basically help us prepare for the North Division. Um, just, just, just helping us get ready and prepare the bang inside, the bang outside, get you up and down, and help those inexperienced freshmen know what the JUCO is about. Okay, when well you talk about the freshmen there, one way to help get the experienced freshmen is experienced sophomores. Talk a little bit about some of your sophomores that you have returning and uh, what you kind of expect of them this season. I have uh, my star and point guard from last year, Tabria Gandy, coming back in. Um, I'm expecting her to step up even more and be a leader. She's already been impressive, already aggressive on the board, shooting, getting a teammate. She has matured so much. And then also Keely, who's been a positive role model, is very encouraged. She has leadership. Um, she should bring good things. And Whitney, she's going to be a shooter that uh, steps up forwards, that played a lot last year. And so I'm looking forward to them with their experience to carry us through this division. Okay, well, let's uh, talk a bit about your freshmen here. New faces, of course, every year is a part of JUCO, uh, but as far as playing time goes normally. Just talk about some of your freshmen, what you expect of them, and kind of what you expect to see out of them as the season progresses. Um, I expect them to grow. Um, we get we were getting ready to leave tomorrow for preseason, so they're, they're stepping up. You have Zaire, Burgess, and uh, Mariah, and Zeri. They all just coming in, and, and they're ready to play. They're hungry. So I, uh, the way they're bringing into practice, their attitude is positive. And then you have a Scarlet Guest, who's another shooter that steps outside. So they're bringing a lot of good things as a freshman. Now they just need the experience and know how to change gears and play, play on this level. Okay, well, they have got a little bit of experience uh, in the preseason so far. Talk a little bit about this year's preseason and kind of how everything's progressed so far. The preseason, we played um, some top opponents. And so um, we came out aggressive. We fought, we battled, and we got to learn a lot about each other. Uh, I learned a lot about them, they learned a lot about me, and they learned that they got to play, play a faster tempo than they did as a, uh, in high school. So that was a big difference for them um, coming in for their preseason. Okay, well, finally here, last question, just uh, talk a little about team goals for this year and what you are hoping to accomplish this season. We're going to build. Uh, we want to be North Division champions again this year, and then we want to make it to the championship uh, state tournament and host it and possibly uh, go play in the regions and get the nationals. Our, uh, just the same attitude as we always been. All right, Coach. Well, best of luck this season. We look forward to getting going. Thank you. And we do appreciate Coach Robin Porter taking time out of her day to talk to us about the upcoming season. She was a little nervous with that being her first official interview as a head coach, but knocked it out of the park as always. Now we're going to shift gears. Uh, Lee Adams also had a chance to catch up with Coach Grant Pate uh, to talk about the Indians' upcoming season, their schedule, some of their players as well. Again, visit letsgoicc.com, the men's basketball page. You can see the uh, full schedule, rosters, and uh, also keep up with all the things the Indians do this season as well. Once again, going to step inside that ICC spotlight being brought to you by our friends at Little Caesars. Hey, don't forget the quickest pizza in Itawamba County just got faster thanks to the new Little Caesars app. Download that. You can do everything. Order your pizza, pay for it from your phone. The only thing you can't do is pick it up, but what you can do is you can use that code or that QR code, scan it in the new pizza portal, pick it up in and out in a hurry. That's Little Caesars right here in Fulton. Let's go to the interview with Coach Grant Pate now here on the ICC Hour being presented by Renaissance Bank. All right, Coach, exciting time of year, basketball season, about ready to tip off. Know you're in preseason now. Uh, just talk a little bit about this year's a regular season schedule and uh, some of the opponents that you plan to face. We're, we're really excited about the upcoming season. We, uh, we're going to start out on November 4th here at home against Volunteer State out of the Tennessee region. And um, it'll be a very competitive non-conference schedule, one that we feel like will prepare us for a really tough North Division um, season and uh, an MACJC um, year, but uh, we're, we'll travel into the Alabama region and we'll play uh, a few Alabama um, 
community colleges, uh, some of the stronger ones there in Alabama, including Shelton State down in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. We'll go into the Tennessee region and we'll play uh, a couple of Tennessee community colleges. We'll play Volunteer State and Motlow State. And uh, we'll also play uh, into the Arkansas region. We'll go over and touch down in Arkansas and, and play at Mid-South Community College. So, you know, we're, we're going to play a, a vast array of teams from all around the Southeast region. And uh, very competitive teams, teams that are, you know, in postseason play every year and uh, trying to prepare our team uh, for postseason play um, and also for a very, very uh, tough uh, North Division um, conference this year. Um, you know, we're, we're really excited and um, look forward to it. All right, well, this year you have a little different luxury that you didn't have last year. You got sophomores returning, and not only sophomores, sophomores who produced well for you and saw a lot, a lot of quality minutes last year as freshmen. Talk a little bit about some of these sophomores coming in and the experience that they'll be able to bring in to help the freshmen. Sure. We, um, you know, leading us back uh, from last year, Madarius Hobson out of Hulk. And Madarius had a tremendous year for us last year as a freshman. And um, we expect him to come in and, and be a bright spot for us um, starting out early, especially with the experience he has. Trevante Doolittle out of Arkansas is another young man that um, had some quality, quality minutes for us and played well for us, uh, you know, at the point guard position and look forward, you know, to him being back. Um, also, Kendrickus Carlton uh, was a was an outstanding player for us last year and counted on Kendrickus and look forward to him coming back, you know, again this year. And those, those guys, um, again, you know, being freshmen and really having to get out there and, and battle uh, without experience. Um, and now their experience is paying off. You can tell that, you know, they have a feel uh, for our league, for, for the college level, the college basketball game. Uh, they know the speed of the game, uh, the physicality of the game. And, uh, and of course, you know, the way the games are officiated at the college level, it's a lot different than the high school level. And um, so those guys along with Ranch Champ, uh, Jeremy Miller, uh, you know, we have several guys that, that are coming back. Um, to be honest, well, we have seven guys that'll be back um, and they'll all contribute in, in different ways to our team. But um, we, we look forward to those guys. We look forward to their leadership and uh, it does feel good to have some sophomores out there on the court. I can imagine so. Now, you do have freshmen as always with JUCO. You're going to have that quick turnaround. Those sophomores, you said you're looking for that leadership. But talk about some of these freshmen that are incoming, names that some of the people in the area might not know from high school or just overlooked them somehow. Just talk a little bit about these freshmen, what you expect of them, and some of the highlights you expect out of them as well. We, uh, you know, we. I, I'm going to allude back to a sophomore, Shamar Brown. He's one I didn't include in that first bit. And, um, and the reason why I include Shamar is he has had a tremendous, um, he had a tremendous summer and he had a tremendous preseason. And he's, he's another young man that's going to give us some size. Shamar's about 6'6", and he, he gives us some size around the basket. And, and we look forward to him and that sophomore group along with the ones that we talked about. But as far as freshmen, uh, we have six in this freshman class that we're excited about. Um, we, we have some local guys um, just up the road from Wheeler, um, Jalen Bean. And Jalen was an outstanding player in high school. He was uh, one of the top scorers in the state of Mississippi. And, um, and look forward to him you know, being, being in our program. Uh, we have a freshman named Tyler Smith that's an out-of-state player um, out of the Atlanta area. And Tyler um, is, is a 6'6", strong, athletic, physical young man that, that should give us some, some good size on the floor um, at physicality. Uh, Brandon Brown um, out of Memphis, Tennessee, comes from uh, a storied program in, in White Station High School in Memphis that produces a lot of outstanding college basketball players. And Brandon's one of those guys. He's, um, you know, he's 6'5", but he plays a guard position. And we look forward to him 
being out there. We have a couple young men from Provine High School that, that are giving us some depth. And, um, and Rodarian Pendleton and, and Shamantis Mitchell. Both those guys are, are doing really well in camp and uh, played last weekend in a jamboree over in Atlanta and, and, and they did a really good job also. Um, the last young man, uh, Antoine Porter um, out of Bayelia and Antoine played on a, a team that, that made it all the way to the Coliseum last year, um, Final Four team in class. 4A and Antoine was a really uh, a quality player, rebounder, athlete, could stretch the floor, plays inside, plays outside, and uh, really excited about this freshman class, uh, the guys that are in it, and, um, and how these guys will match with our sophomore guys. We're looking forward to that. Okay, Coach. Well, one last question here. Just talk a little about how you're wrapping up preseason and what some of the goals and some of the things you hope to accomplish this season? You know, we, we, we're we really working at, um, at identifying, you know, our, our top, top guys and, um, you know, what, what we can do, what may work for us, what may not work for us. And that, that's always a trial run, really. You know, when you get into preseason and you're, you're entering the end season part of our, of our season. Um, you know, we had seven weeks of preseason, and in those seven weeks, we get another up-close look at our team uh, together as freshmen and sophomores. The summer is mostly uh, a sneak preview. The summer is, is our freshmen. Two or three sophomores usually come out for summer school, but it's mostly our freshmen and trying to get to know our freshmen up close and personal in the weight room, on the court, off the court. Um, you know, just around campus in the college classroom. But these, these last, uh, this is our fourth week of being in season, actually. And um, we've played in one jamboree. We played two teams, uh, Georgia Highlands. That's a really, really good team in that Georgia region. And we played Columbia State. That's out of the Tennessee region that was really, really competitive and has a good program. Um, those guys, we're, we're starting to get some video. We're starting to teach a lot off the video. Uh, you can just see so much more and you can teach a whole lot better when you can see yourself out there on the court. So we're, we're battling every day. Uh, the guys are battling every day. Uh, we're getting stronger. We're staying in the weight room. Uh, we're trying to keep our conditioning up as we teach. And uh, we're scrimmaging a lot, you know, just trying to put our guys in some adverse situations and uh, see how they react. Um, really work on our execution um, in different situations. Um, and then we'll play again this coming week. Um, I have, uh, a Mississippi Junior College team will come up and we'll play uh, this Friday and uh, get another look and get some more video footage that we can teach our guys before uh, we jump into our first a real game on November the 4th against Volunteer State. All right, Coach. Well, best of luck this season. We look forward to get going. Thank you. God bless you. Once again, a special thank you to Coach Robin Porter, Coach Grant Pate for taking time out of their days to talk to us about the upcoming basketball season. Again, the basketball season will start on November the 4th. Uh, very unique this season. Every game except one, every home game except one, I should say, uh, 11 home games this season. Ten of those will be on a Monday night uh, here in Fulton. We do want to encourage you to come out and support both the Lady Indians and the Indians this season. If you can't, those games will be available on letsgoicctv.com. And, of course, we'll have updates here on the ICC app throughout the year as well. All right, so well, we're going to take you to a quick break. When we come back, we're going to break down the soccer seasons. Of course, the men were eliminated from postseason play after dropping a uh, 2 nothing decision to Gulf Coast. Lady Indians uh, could be playing for a MACJC championship later on this afternoon. We'll talk about that when we come back from the break. We'll also hear from Clayton O'Daniel, who was named MACJC Player of the Week, and look back at some interviews from the women's uh, quarterfinal victory uh, from this past week as well. We'll be back more of the ICC Hour right after this on Super Talk Mississippi. Ever since you got that license, you haven't stopped moving forward. Now that you're older and on the move, you need a safer place to keep your money. We get it. A student checking account frees you up with things like mobile check deposit, 
to take care of that check from grandma without having to stop at a bank. Pay with your phone when you're out with friends. And stop worrying about ATM fees. We'll pay you back for those. Worry about your future, not your money. And know that we'll stick with you wherever you go. Renaissance Bank. Understanding you. Member FDIC. My burger goes best with mustard. Ketchup and mustard. Grass-fed beef. No, corn-fed. On the grill. Now, nah, flat top. Iceberg lettuce. Nah, arugula. Jalapeno. No way. Avocado, dude. Medium rare. Gotta be all done. Rio. Sesame seeds. American cheese. Cheddar. Can I have a turkey burger? What? Turkeys are for Thanksgiving, man. I like my burger with the Coke. I'll agree to that. Strictly with the Coke. Only with the Coke. Coke and a burger. Come on. All right. That's where you get the flavor. Davis Ford in Fulton is your Ford dealer for new cars, trucks, and SUVs and has a wide inventory of certified pre-owned vehicles. Find your next dream car or truck from our Ford showroom or go online to davisfordsales.com and search our new and used inventory to see what is on our lot. So stop by and test drive the all-new fuel-efficient Ford Focus or Ford Fusion or the new Ford Explorer or F-150. Go further with Davis Ford, 904 West Main Street in Fulton or online davisfordsales.com. Get a Little Caesars large, extra most bestest stuffed crust pizza topped with pepperoni and cheese. And stuffed with over three feet of cheese. In the crust. That's right. We stuffed cheese. Into the crust of the pizza with extra cheese. And the most pepperoni. All at the nation's best price of just nine bucks. Try our convenient app and pizza portal pickup. Pizza, pizza. At Itawamba Community College, your education is our top priority. With a 20 to 1 student to teacher ratio, you will get the help that you need from your instructors. With three locations in Fulton, Tupelo, and Belden, ICC offers classes that will prepare you to enter almost any job field of your choice. Learn more about Wallet Hub's number one community college in Mississippi and the 25th best in the country by visiting iccms.edu or apply online at apply.iccms.edu. Itawamba Community College, the best start here. And welcome back to the ICC Hour. I'm Adam Gore. ICC Hour, as always, being presented by Renaissance Bank, the best bank in the South. Visit renaissancebank.com. And, and by the way, don't forget to go check out renaissantnation.com. That's where they have all those uh, specialized videos. Uh, you can see some of those there. I know you've seen the uh, Blue Delta Gene Company uh, ran in some of our broadcasts this year as well. But, uh, yeah, go by and see that. they got those SEC shorts, some of those other uh, funny videos that you see a lot shared on YouTube uh, or on Facebook, Twitter as well. Uh, so you want to do that. They also got some great, uh, like, advice for those that might be thinking about money management if you're a student out there. Uh, you can see that on renaissantnation.com. Also, don't forget to search Renaissance Bank on YouTube as well. All right, so we were talking about it. We're going to catch you up on uh, the uh, soccer seasons, and let's start with the women's soccer team. They advanced to the MACJC semifinals against Pearl River on Monday. Of course, now this show is pre-recorded because we were on the road uh, Monday. If the Lady Indians were able to defeat Pearl River here in about a couple of hours, actually around 3:30, uh, we will um, have the MACJC championship match that either be between Holmes, who ICC is one and one with on the season, or it could be against Jones if Jones upset and actually ranked. Lady Bulldogs. Uh, you can watch that match on Let's Go ICC TV.com, the red channel. Hopefully that will be the case. Now, if the Lady Indians somehow didn't find a way to beat Pearl River, then of course their season will have come to an end. And what a magical season it has been for the Lady Indians. Leading into this week, they had won 15 straight, uh, including a share of the North Division crown. They did uh, end up goal differentials was the difference in that situation there for the Lady Indians uh, to not be able to come out with that North Division championship this year. But they did get the share of it as well. All right, so we talked about their big 4-0 win over Gulf Coast uh, this past week to advance to the semifinals. Let's go to some post match interviews. I believe uh, Anna Wesley, excuse me, Anna Wesley Driscoll, Hallie Moore, and Coach Davis Strother all took time to talk to Lee Adams after the match. So let's go to that interview now. This ICC spotlight being brought to you by the ICC Baptist Student Union. For ICC students, don't forget they meet Monday nights at 7.07, Wednesdays at lunch. All they ask is you bring two bucks and a friend. Why not bring $2 for your friend? Treat them for lunch as well. That's the ICC BSU. Follow them on Twitter at ICC BSU. 
And what's a big playoff win today to advance to the conference tournament. Just talk about what that means to you and the rest of your team and about today's game. Well, today I feel like we kind of started out a little slow, but we stepped it up in the end. Uh, this team just means so much to me, and I'm so happy that we can continue our streak together, and I hope we can win more. Allie, big win today to advance to the semifinals of the conference tournament. Just talk about your goal and how it feels to be heading to the conference tournament. Yeah, um, I think Allie got the foul drawn um, over to the right side of the field, and I went up and uh, – took a shot and it just went right over the goalie in the back of the net and it was just a good feeling um, to get that first goal and open up the game for us. Okay, we'll talk about that conference tournament, what it means to you to be heading down there now. Well, like Coach was saying to us earlier, it's his first playoff win, so that means a lot that we got that for him and we got that for us and we earned it every step of the way and I'm just really excited to go down there and hope we can play really hard and get another win. Coach, big playoff win in a shutout fashion, advanced to the semifinals now, but Let's talk a little bit about today's game and improving that win streak to 15 now. Yeah, yeah um, so just a, another a great opportunity for us to get better today. And uh, I, I challenged the team before we played today, reminding them that we've been doing this for 14 games in a row. Uh, and so it's not that we were in that mindset in the first, second, third game, probably even into the 10th or 11th game. Uh, but now that we've had that going, I told them that we've been in this challenge of uh, feeling the expectations if you know if we lose and the streak is done and so they've really been in a playoff mentality uh, for for well over a few few weeks now and so I, I thought that we just uh, continue to play uh, like we, we have the past few weeks I thought moments we didn't play our, our best um, I thought in moments we played really really well so we can go back and look at it on video and, and look to improve and get ready for that semifinal matchup with Pearl River okay we'll just talk a little bit about that and uh, about the excitement of heading down to the conference uh, tournament well anytime you advance you're still playing you're obviously excited and, and we are certainly excited to have the opportunity to see an opponent we've already seen before I, I feel like uh, Pearl River is probably the most defensively organized team within the conference uh, we've saw we've seen them earlier in the year we caught them on, on one moment and uh, we only got away with the one over result. Uh, they don't give away a lot of goals. Uh, we know it's going to be challenging because we like to score a lot of goals. Uh, so we, we're just going to have to figure out different wrinkles for us to stay organized in both our attack and also in our recovery and our, in our defending work. All right, Coach, well, best of luck this weekend. Thank you, man. Again, a special thank you to Anna Wesley Driscoll, uh, Hallie Moore, and Coach David Strother for talking with Lee Adams after the Lady Indians 4-0 win in the quarterfinal round of the MACJC soccer playoffs. As we said, they played yesterday at 11, and hopefully a little bit later on this afternoon, they'll be playing for the MACJC Women's Championship at 3.30. If that is the case, once again, it will be available on Let's Go ICC TV.com slash the Red Channel. Uh, we do encourage you uh, to follow us on Twitter or go back and look on Twitter. You can find those results from yesterday at Let's Go ICC or visit Let's Go ICC Dot com. Now, we talked about the men's match, and unfortunately, their season came to a much earlier end than the Indians had hoped. Uh, Gulf Coast, man, they just played lights out against the Indians this past week to pick up a 2-0 victory. Uh, it was just a tough, tough, tough day for the Indians uh, as the Brakes were beating the boys in Delta, or excuse me, not Delta, but Gulf Coast uh, just came out and played very, very inspired soccer to be able to advance to the quarterfinals there. We do wish the best of luck to Gulf Coast uh, as they pursue that MACJC championship. Also last week, a uh, big honor for Clayton O'Daniel, one of those sophomores that wrapped up his season this past week. Uh, wrap it up in a big way for Clayton as he was named MACJC uh, Player of the Week. Now, you'll hear him reference uh, some of the Gulf Coast uh, games because this was previously recorded. So uh, you'll hear that in this interview here as we talk to Clayton O'Daniel and Coach Mike Sullivan about the honor of Clayton being named MACJC Soccer Player of the Week. Clayton, big day for you, uh, being named Conference Player of the Week. Uh, just talk about what that means to you and a little bit about last week and how everything went for you. Yeah, it's a it's a great honor to, to be recognized as Player of the Week. And uh, last week, got three goals, two assists. So uh, just trying to do everything I can to help the team win. And, uh, you know, I really like to win. And we got a playoff game coming up against Gulf Coast, so really want to win that and get into the state championship and uh, state finals and win that, and that's the that's the biggest goal. Coach, big day for your program with Clayton being named Conference Player of the Week. Just uh, talk about his performance last week and what he's meant to the program this year. Yeah, I mean, uh, great performance last week. Uh, he's getting hot at the right time, that's for sure. A couple of goals, a couple of assists. Uh, you know, we got Gulf Coast coming up in the uh, semi uh, quarterfinals, and, uh, you know, we want everybody clicking on all cylinders, and right now, you know, Clayton seems to be fine in the back of the net in the last, really, about two or three weeks. He's had some pretty good games, you know, along with a lot of his teammates. So, you know, we're excited and uh, looking forward to the game tomorrow. And hopefully uh, we'll be able to move on to uh, – 
play at Heinz this weekend in a semifinal match. And again, we appreciate Clayton and Sully for taking time out of their day to talk to us about Clayton being named MACJC Men's Soccer Player of the Week last week. Uh, I know we've bombarded you with athletics today, and uh, we try to both incorporate athletic and academics. So what we're going to do is when we come back to the ICC Hour being presented by Renaissance Bank, uh, the best bank in the South, visit renaissancebank.com. Uh, we're going to talk with Catherine Morgan. Uh, we're going to look back at an interview we had with her, part of our PTK series. If you would like to see this show or maybe even some of the previous shows or hear some of the PTK interviews, you can visit letsgoicctv.com. Uh, visit the On Demand section. You'll see the uh, weeks listed there uh, under the ICC Hour. You can also go back and watch some football men's soccer matches as well from the season and eventually the women's soccer matches once they get their season wrapped up. And then, of course, uh, you can uh, also search the videos on YouTube by simply searching the let the uh, excuse me the ICC hour. We'll be back more of the ICC hour right here on Super Talk Mississippi right after this. Zelle is the new way to move money, and it's already included inside your Renaissance Bank mobile app. No additional downloads, no additional signups. Whether you're paying a friend back for pizza or chipping in for gas, Zelle lets you send money quickly to almost anyone in your contacts. Here's how it works. Open the Renaissance app, log in, and tap the blue button with the white plus sign on it and select Zelle. Choose send, request, or split. Pick who you want to exchange money with, either from your contacts or by entering a phone number or email. Choose the account you want to pay with and select an amount. Review and confirm. To stay organized, you can even include a short description of what each payment is for. That's it. Your money is on the move. Most payments take place in just minutes. No need to download another app. It all happens inside here. Balance the bill, split the check, and pay your way with Zelle. To learn more about Zelle, visit renaissancebank.com or download the Renaissance Bank mobile app to start using Zelle today. Renaissance Bank, understanding you. Member FDIC. Continue our spotlight on the ICC PTK program here and talk with Miss Catherine Morgan of Amory. And Catherine, I uh, appreciate you taking time out of your day to join us. Of course. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself. You're from Amory, a sophomore here at ICC. Uh, what's your major and, and all, that, all that information? I am a biochem a major a minoring in Spanish, um, pre-med, so hopefully to go on to be a doctor one day. Uh, and like you said, I'm from Amory. And um, yeah. That's about, yeah. I got you. That okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you now. I'm limited, a little intimidated. Pre-med, future doctor here, so you're easily the smartest person in the room, and there's only <laughs> two people in here right now. Uh, so let's talk about the PTK. Uh, what got you interested in the PTK, and why did you join the PTK? Well, there was, I've always heard lots of good things about it from when I was in high school. My teachers always pushed me and told me, when you get to college, join it. It's a good opportunity. I heard uh, the scholarship... Uh, opportunities when transferring and that that because I know I want to be a doctor transferring mm -hmm. getting those bachelor's degree uh, costs down mm -hmm. helps a lot and so that was the main primary and then when I got here to ICC before I got inducted officially in December uh, I met a bunch of the officers and they talked me into it they're like you need to get even more involved than just joining and uh, it really showed a lot of friendship and like a big family uh, the the advisors, Miss Lowe, Miss Hun Mr. Humphreys, and Miss McCormick, they they really care about you, yeah. and I wanted I wanted to be a part of it. Well, that's one thing we talked about uh, in a previous interview with Kaylin Johnson, the president of PTK, and she echoed the same things about that about your uh, about the leadership at the PTK. And I'm just you know I don't get to get over there as much as I like, but that's a fun group of people, and everybody that I've talked to that's come out of the PTK, it's just a great organization to be a part of. Yes, there. Uh, over the summer, I was able to go because I was I'm a regional reporter for the Miss Low region. I was able to go to San Diego with the president, and awesome. we bonded a lot. We didn't know each other beforehand, mm -hmm. and now she's my best friend. I mean, I I didn't expect that at all. Uh, I didn't think coming here I would make friends, and majority of them are in PTK. Mm -hmm. I uh, met them in other classes, but majority are PTK, and I bonded with her in San Diego, and then I've met so many people just being off a of, uh, VP of scholarship and being the Missla regional reporter. There's a lot of 
fam family ties. Yeah, and I like that because we use that word family a lot around here at ICC. All right, so you talked about it a little bit earlier as well, um, the scholarships that are available. Uh, I know uh, you're kind of undecided right now, so if anybody from Ole Miss and Mississippi State is listening, kind of <laughs> got a little recruiting battle going on here, but uh, you have rece received the Dow Leadership Scholarship. Yes. It is a $1,500 scholarship. So just talk about that scholarship. So how do you get the Dow Leadership Scholarship? I wasn't even aware at the time when I was applying that they had a separate scholarship for the one that scored the highest. Mm -hmm. I just was applying for the Coca-Cola Leaders of Promise Scholarship hoping that I would get it. Right. And when I applied, uh, they rank your your scholarship application as a whole based off GPA, a letter recommendation, your essays you write. And I managed to get the top one and whenever you score the highest, they give you the Dowell Leadership Scholarship and now I'm that scholar and it's $1,500 scholarship. Awesome, and so there you go, Mississippi State, Ole Miss, so you, you, you got the top score here as well. So, uh, But just talk about that, $1,500 uh, going towards your education on the next level. Uh, when you come out of PTK, I mean, it's just a great opportunity to keep you from being, having to go into debt. And with your the, the, the doctor that you're going to pursue, that's got to be big. And that's not only big, but life-changing once you do pursue and achieve that goal of getting your degree. Oh, yeah, I've gotten, now that I have... Uh, been awarded that scholarship that goes towards my education here right now mm -hmm. and helps me with costs not necessarily tuition here because of the scholarships I've gotten here right. I've gotten a bunch of that paid for mm -hmm. but books traveling expenses to and from school living expenses and you gotta buy food you mm -hmm. I mean you can't just live off of tuition yeah, money that's true you gotta <laughs> have extra stuff too and that that helps a good bit and then that helps me not go into debt from getting out student loans. So when I get to the next level, these transfer scholarships, uh, Ole Miss and I know Mississippi State offer a lot of money for PTK transfers. And I have that. And then some of these other scholarships I'll be applying for, I'm in the process of applying for some more through PTK that will be stackable with what I'll be getting at Mississippi State and Ole Miss. And it, that'll cover a lot. Well, that's awesome. I'm somebody that uh, I had to go the route of taking student loans, so uh, I know the stresses that come along with having to pay those. So as a student right now, just talk about that that aspect of taking that stress of way of knowing, hey, how am I going to pay for this? Now, that has to help you in the classroom as well. Oh, yeah. Whenever That's one less thing you got to think about. Whenever everything's paid for, you don't have to think about, well, where am I going to find the money to pay for this? And different honor societies like Phi Theta Kappa, they have that fee you have to pay. Well, there's little fees everywhere, yeah. whether you realize it or not, when you're in college. And if you can't pay it, or mm. it's the little stuff. Maybe you want to buy a T-shirt to support. Mm. It's little stuff that to support your college and be involved that, that add up and cost money. And not and knowing that I don't have to worry about that, it's a huge thing. And because I am pre-med, mm. school already stresses yeah. me out yeah. enough. Yes. And the hard science classes I'm in, and then not having to worry about that money—that's a huge, yeah. huge thing. And, and two, I know it's a just just over a hundred dollars to join PTK. But if somebody said, Catherine, if you give me a hundred dollars, I'm going to give you fifteen hundred back. Mm -hmm. I think you do that every time. Oh yeah. Uh, I didn't. I didn't think. I didn't know if I would win it or not. Mm. Uh, I know the transfer scholarships, they go, they range from eight to, mm. to more, $1,000. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a fair trade yes. for me. Yes. $100 versus $8,000, i will trade that any day. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, so tell me one, why, obviously we talked about why, but why should somebody consider joining the PTK when they get to ICC? Oh, there's plenty of reasons. But, I mean, if you want more of the statistical mm. money is primary reason a lot of people join mm -hmm. um, when they see the numbers and they see the the give and take yeah. right there like oh that's a lot of money I can yeah. get because a lot of people when they join they're like okay I'm going on to a bachelor's degree and that's what they want uh, so they need that money going on and other than that it's the family aspect it really is uh, I've made friends I didn't think I'd make and I've got friends Fulton Pontotoc all over the place, honestly, that I didn't know. And looking back in high school, I'm like, how did I not know these people mm -hmm. already? Because they're such an influence in my life. And you know, that's and that's a good point. I want to get to another question next, but a lot of times you hear people say they don't want to come to community college because they're going to see everybody they went to school with. 
So that's not the case because as you just said, uh, it opens you up to a whole new world and a whole new world of people that other than ICC and PTK, you may have never had the opportunity to meet. Yeah, and I, to me it was a little sad knowing that uh, I had some friends, but we all had different routes we wanted to go. I was a science major. My friends are business majors. They mm -hmm. take different classes right. than me. But when I went to the science, when you're in that science building, you meet people that you sit by, and those are your study groups. Those people you go to the library study with, that you get to know on a personal level, those become your best friends. Mm -hmm. And I don't really see my other ones from high school as much. I made a whole new group of friends. Yeah. And that, it, it's great. And, and, and I'll tell you now, because I, I've, I've been at ICC for almost 10 years now, these relationships and friends you're building now, they're going to last a lifetime. Oh, and yeah. that's always the coolest I can, part. I can see some, I mean, when you're in elementary up to high school, you have those friends, but whenever you get to branch out, it's a whole bigger, because I come from a small school. Mm -hmm. So you made friends with, the 50 people that were in your class. Right. When you get here, there's several hundred people. Mm -hmm. You've got more of a, you can actually pick and choose the good people to pick, keep in your life or the people that are in your same field of study that you may end up in med school with, like mm -hmm. in my right. my case. And they may end up being lifelong friends I may have in 10 years. That's a that's an awesome testimony to that. And now the question I always ask everybody, uh, what does ICC mean to you? Family is honestly the first thing that comes to mind. I feel at home here. Uh, when I come here, it's natural. I know exactly everywhere, where anywhere I want to go, I know exactly what I need to do. Uh, if I need help with anything, I know my teachers are always there to help me. It, it feels like a family aspect because my dad, he's he was always the person that if I ever needed any help, he would help me do mm -hmm. anything. So schoolwork, he was always a smart person, so he helped me. And so when I'm here, I feel like I have that with me, even though he's back home, right. I have teachers that I feel that closeness and that bond with and I have other peers that I didn't necessarily have in high school because it was a small school. You didn't always have people that want to strive as hard as you and has get as far mm -hmm. and I did so now that I have people that work just as hard as me, I feel, I feel more at home. And that does it for today's show. We do appreciate all the interviews we had. Coach Sean Cannon, uh, Robin Porter, Coach Grant Pate, Mike Sullivan, David Strother, Catherine Morgan, Hallie Moore, Anna Wesley Driscoll, Lee Adams doing a lot of those interviews as well. So it's been an incredibly busy show today, but another great show. We don't want to we do want to invite you to join us every Tuesday at 906 here on Super Talk Mississippi, 101.9 FM. Don't forget to visit let's go ICC.com to keep up with all the athletics and ICCMS.edu for everything going on academically at the college. You guys have a blessed day. We'll see you next week. And as always, Roll Tribe. At Renaissance Bank, we understand your company deserves individualized attention that will support your company's goals. Whether you're looking to finance or lease equipment, we offer flexible options to help you secure capital for your assets. Whether you're a transportation company looking to expand your fleet, a telecommunications company upgrading your capabilities, or anything in between, we can help you. We offer finance agreements or capital leases, tax leases, and track leases, as well as tax-free financing for municipalities and 501c3s. We've been providing financial services to businesses like yours for over a century. So let us show you how Renaissance Bank's equipment financing and leasing can benefit your company. Renaissance Bank, understanding you. Member FDIC. At Itawamba Community College, your education is our top priority. With a 20 to 1 student to teacher ratio, you will get the help that you need from your instructors. With three locations in Fulton, Tupelo, and Belden, ICC offers classes that will prepare you to enter almost any job field of your choice. Learn more about Wallet Hub's number one community college in Mississippi and the 25th best in the country by visiting iccms.edu or apply online at apply.iccms.edu. Itawamba Community College, the best start here.